the fundamentalists didn't declare the Bible to be inerrant till the 19th century. It was almost exactly the same time that we Catholics decided that the Pope was infallible, the middle of the 19th century. Now, how did Christianity get along for 1900 years without this appeal to absolute authority? Well, the Enlightenment had just happened. All the intelligentsia of Europe, especially in English-speaking, French-speaking, German-speaking countries, they were all leaving Christianity en masse. So we wanted to be smart. We wanted to be a part of the conversation again. So we had to find some appeal to an absolute authority. You went to the Bible, we went to the Pope. They both were, an, for 500 years, well, that's 150 years really, but for 500 years we appealed to words. The last 150 years we appealed to separate authorities. You know? Now, that's not completely bad, but it's not completely good either. Because what got eliminated was inner authority. Now, you know, you read Jeremiah 31, and he says, I'm going to give you a new covenant, all right? I'm going to plant the Spirit in your heart. No longer will teacher have to teach you. You will know. That's dangerous talk. That's really dangerous talk. Now, Paul is building on that uh, again and again. The Spirit has been poured into your heart. The, the indwelling Holy Spirit is the basis for inner authority. Now, I don't want to put that into opposition with scriptural authority or church authority, but when they sort of regulate and balance one another, you, you tend to have very solid and creative people. I'm just being honest. They're solid. They're not jumping around from opinion to opinion. In the school, we call it our tricycle, our methodology. And there's three wheels on the tricycle. I say the front wheel is experience, because you're going to trust that anyway. So we might as well be honest about it. The back two wheels are scripture and tradition. We Catholics emphasize tradition. Protestants emphasize scripture. All three are needed. When you put them in a position where they regulate, balance, and inform one another, you can move forward. You really can. In an intelligent way, in a faith-filled way, in a scriptural way. And I think it's the spirit that drives the tricycle. <laughs> it's the indwelling spirit. But you know, many churches have said the missing person in the Blessed Trinity is the Holy Spirit. Most of our churches have a very undeveloped theology of the Spirit. And because of that, we have an undeveloped theology of the human person, often an almost negative anthropology. You know, if you start, I'm not trying to pick on anybody, but defining the human person as totally depraved, which one of the reformers did, and God bless Martin Luther as much as I love him, in one of his sermons he said, human nature is a pile of manure covered with the snow that is Christ. He thought he was doing us a favor. But, <laughs> but you see, good theology does not undo bad anthropology. When the Word became flesh, it was saying the flesh is good. God loves humanity. Humanity is God's beloved. And you can't uh, put a wonderful, exaggerated theology of salvation on top of a horrible image of humanity <laughs> that were totally depraved or a pile of manure. So it, the indwelling spirit was meant to localize that dignity inherently in each person. So it isn't up to you and I to decide, well, she has it, but he doesn't. We can't take that risk any longer. Look at what we've done with it. The black people don't have it, the whites do. The, the Indians don't have it. We uh, pioneers do. Uh, the gay people don't have it. We straights do. We will just keep finding another excuse to decide who doesn't have the Holy Spirit. It has to come with creation. Now that's very Franciscan spirituality. That uh, We call it creation spirituality now. Uh, built on Genesis 1, not Genesis 3. 
And most Protestant theology, sorry to have to say it, but it begins with Genesis 3. We began with Genesis 1. It is good, it is good, it is good, it is good, it is very good. All right? That's a positive anthropology, a positive, inherently dignified understanding of the human person, where it isn't in your or my place to decide who has the dignity and who doesn't. A handicapped person has it just as much as us in our lovely bodies. So that was supposed to be a social revolution. <laughs> that was supposed to change history. And everybody was welcome at that table. But boy, we whittled it down. You know, we, we pretended, and we Catholics started this, so I can't blame you. Uh, we thought we gave the Holy Spirit when we baptized the baby, and we did baptize babies, all right? Uh, well, once you think it's in your hands to give the Holy Spirit, all baptism is doing is awakening, saying, be aware, you're a beloved child of God, but you were before I poured that water. I'm just here, I'm the announcer of the good news. But we thought we were the creators of the soul, as it were. And that was uh, the arrogance that was on the other side of this inferior self-image. Here we are saying it's terrible to be a human being, and yet we human beings determine pretty much who's going to heaven and who isn't. We, we couldn't accept radical grace that was inherent with creation. 